Okay, the project today is to mount an external antenna to the shed. Uh, I have an old Arrow J-pole, dual band J-pole. It's got two meter and 70 centimeter stubs on it. So this is gonna be an exterior antenna. Um, I have some ways that I'm gonna mount it in the future off like off a pole so that I can get a little high, height out of it. But for the time being, I just wanna, I mainly wanna get the ground rod sunk in. Um, so the way this is gonna work is if, if if you've ever seen this kind of thing before, I'll explain it. This is your external, this is your feed line, which is like a, like a, a low loss, really thick, high quality feed line. I can't remember, I think this is an RG8 or something, I don't know what you call it, um, but it's real low loss, really heavy and, and not very flexible. So good for outdoor use. So I'm gonna mount that on there. That's gonna travel down to the ground rod right here, which I gotta drive in right now. Um, that'll be the big project. And I'm gonna drive that into the ground like eight feet, leave a few inches sticking out. And then I purchased this bracket, pretty expensive because it's just solid copper. So that mounts to the ground, the, the stub of the ground rod, right? And then you have to mount on top of that a lightning arrestor. So this is like a, a pretty high quality lightning arrestor. So basically there's a some sort of vacuum breaker thing in here. And if it ever gets too much static or there's a lightning hit, the idea is that that pops. It doesn't let the signal, it doesn't let the static travel through the rest of the coax and into your radio. So then the other side of the coax, of course, this is gonna be mounted low to the ground, in the ground. Kind of inconvenient, because it is pretty low, but then you have to run this line into the shed, into wherever your radio is. And so I don't know if I'm gonna have enough length, but if I don't, I'll just get a longer length of that. And I have another use for that as well. Because I think what I'm gonna do is an exterior antenna. And let's say the weather's bad or we leave on a trip. Um, of course, I could unplug it, but the, what, I, what I'd like to do is put an internal antenna up in the attic. And usually those are not as subject to lightning strikes as the, the external stuff. So I'll just put a little shorty antenna in there with a switch and I can select internal antenna, outside antenna for more gain. So if you want the most gain, you put the out, out exterior, but if you get a storm coming in, you either want to unplug it or turn it off. I don't like the idea of unplugging it because I tend to forget things. What's going to happen is I'll unplug it, I'll key up, and then, you know, blow out the finals of the radio. You need to have a load on a ra on, on, on any sort of transceiver, ham radio, uh, especially because they put out a lot of power and they'll burn up the transistors and stuff in the radio if you don't have a load on it. So I'd rather have it, you know, a load that's like maybe inside, not you know, transmitting as far versus, you know, blowing up the radio. So that's a future thing. The main thing today is to get this ground rod in, which I've been putting off for a long time. So I want to get that in. I want to get that bracket mounted to it. And then we'll get the feed line in there and we'll see how far we get. I could probably get this hooked up to the radio today, but um, final solution might not be, um, you know, if it's not long enough, I'll have to figure out something different. So we might be able to just, we're just going to try to get operational here and uh, see where we end up. Okay, for this part, um, we put the ground rod in. You can see it's eight foot, it's an eight foot, I think it's a half inch copper coated ground rod. I was expecting this to be really, really difficult. Um, sometimes this ground is pretty tough, but it turned out that it was very easy. This is, uh, the ground is really soft. There's a, you know, it's just been, it's kind of end of winter and um, it's kind of the perfect time to put this in. I really just kind of shoved this down in there and got it most of the way and then pretty easily pounded it in with a sledgehammer much easier than in this at the end of the summer when i did the uh, original ground rod for this uh, shed okay for this part it's just very self-explanatory uh, you just simply bolt this copper bracket that i showed earlier just bolt it onto the uh, onto this ground rod tighten up tighten it up nice and tight so it makes a good bond to it. I pre-mounted uh, the lightning arrestor itself to the bracket just to make my life a little easier. But nothing special here, just tighten it down till it's super tight. Um, looking back, I probably should have gotten uh, a thicker ground rod. I think it would have been able to be just a little bit tighter. But, you know, there's nothing saying you couldn't put one right next to it and then, you know, gang them together and get a really good ground. So. Um, it's just that this one was a little thin, so it still it still was able to be tightened up um, 
to an adequate level, so I think it'll be fine. It's kind of hard to see with this angle. Um, I couldn't find a good spot to set the camera, but all I did was take a couple of wood screws and screw in this antenna to the side of the shed, just up in the peak of the, the ridge there. Um, I will go back and fix this. I'm gonna to try to mount it to a pipe so I can get a little more height. Um, and this is just a temporary solution just to get things going, not final solution. But unless we're in a big windstorm, it should work okay for a while. Again, hard to see at this angle, but all I'm doing here is attaching the thick coax. The one we talked about earlier, I'm just screwing that to the bottom of the antenna. Um, final solution, I'm gonna have to probably figure out a way to seal that from the elements, either with heat shrink tubing or some sort of you know sealer or uh, rubber, rubber glue or something like that. I, I have to look into that and see what's best for this, but um, just needed to get a temporary fix. So it's screwed in there. Now I'm gonna run it down to the uh, ground rod. Okay, this is the least favorite part here where you gotta drill a nice hole in the side of your nice new shed. But I drilled a three quarter inch hole in there and I was able to fish that uh, final piece of coax in from the ground rod back up. As you can see, I have to kind of come up. I wanted to go in the attic of this shed and just kind of run it through there. So uh, I, I was able to fish it in there pretty easily. And then later on, I ran uh, a bit of silicone around that just to seal that hole up around the coax. Okay, so we got the wires routed, the coax routed uh, to like from the antenna down to the ground rod and the lightning arrester and then back up, drilled a hole, three quarter inch hole to run the coax up into the attic of this place, up into the little crawl space area. So now I gotta shimmy up there and see if we have enough length in that coax to go over to here and then drop down. And I think we do, I think it's gonna be a little tight but I think it's gonna be okay. I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna get up there, shimmy up there and see if I can, see if I can pull that coax down and just estimate if there's enough of it or if I'm gonna to have to buy more. But there's the coax right there that I shoved through the, the side of the wall, the side of the shed here. And so I think I have enough, but I'm gonna go just estimate here real quick, see what we got. Okay, straightforward. Uh, of course, I drilled a hole that was into a rafter that didn't work. I could barely get it in there, so I had to go. I actually just went right in the center here. Came out really clean. I have plenty, like probably another several feet of coax up there. So I'm just going to kind of leave it and pull as I, <clears throat> as I need to. Probably drop it under there, and then I'll, you know, I'll put some clamps. I have some, uh, some low-voltage wire. Uh, clamps and I'll make it look kind of neat through here. I could even paint it to kind of hide it, but I'll get everything arranged. And then what I'm going to end up doing is running another short piece of coax up there to an internal antenna, like I was mentioning before. And I already have the base for it. It's a base I got a, quite a while ago, but I need to put the other ground plane in there, but um, that'll mount up in there. I'll just get a shorty, a little shorty antenna, you know, some 18 inch tall thing and just mount that up there. Boom, now you got internal antenna, external antenna. So a little short range, a little longer range. And then outside, um, I'm not gonna go out there, but um, outside where that runs out, um, I have plenty of room. I probably have another six, eight feet of, well, probably about six feet of co coax, <laughs> sorry, dust. I probably have another six feet of coax that I can put on a pipe or hang that antenna in that tree next to it, I'd like to somehow figure out a way to do that just to get a little more elevation out of it because right now it's pretty low. So um, we'll see, we're really close to just being able to test this thing out. I mean, I could probably do it right now, but I got a big mess going here. I gotta, I gotta plug that hole with something, probably with some putty and I gotta vacuum up this mess right here. It's a big old, big old mess all over everything. So I gotta go get the vacuum and take care of that. A little resonant lengths on there. All right, it's doing well for you. Well, 
good luck and enjoy. Okay, I finally got this all set up. Uh, got the area cleaned up back here. I've been making, made a few audio checks, a few radio checks. Uh, I got a hold of somebody on Simplex pretty easily. Obviously got into a few repeaters 30 to 50 miles away. Great signal reports. And the best thing is the SWR seems to be dialed in. Like it's around one from what I can tell across the, the frequency ranges that I checked. Um, and I've never seen them that low on this particular antenna before. So I, I think it's due to the fact that we have a really good ground right now and that's helping me a lot. If you have any questions about this build or this setup, let me know in the comments what those are. This is something that I've wanted to get done for the last few years around here. I've just kind of set up some makeshift antenna situations, you know, had a, this antenna in the garage and up in the attic and all that kind of stuff. Just was not opt, just was not optimal. So it wasn't uh, a very good setup. So now I feel pretty good about it. I think I can only improve it by raising up the, the height of this thing. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you learned something. Um, I know I did. I've never set up the whole ground, you know, the ground rod and the lightning arresters and stuff like that. I hope to never really have to see if they work because you know, any lightning hit can really damage your radio quickly. So I'm hoping that's going to take care of that. Still, if there's a lightning storm and you know there's going to be a storm, it's best to unplug everything and probably not have anything near that coax. It's just kind of a dangerous situation. But in the event that it does happen, hopefully, I've heard good things about this particular, this particular uh, type of gear. So um, yeah, that's about it. So if you have any questions, drop them in the comments. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.